You have to remember that, especially with the hunting community, if there's something really weird, they ain't gonna tell you. They're just not gonna do it. It's bad enough for telling you they saw a Sasquatch, you know? So I have been known to dig a little bit about things like, you know, uh, that level of unreasonable fear and dread when there's one around uh, or when they see one. Uh, that's a very common thread. Uh, you know, all of a sudden experiencing like panic attack or like a, a, a woken up nightmare, which is, I've, I've experienced that myself. So I know that there is, uh, there is that, you know, I talk to people who aren't afraid of anything and they say they experience unreasonable levels of fear. A lot of hunters will tell you that they've been run out of an area because of a bad feeling and they never go back. There's the tradition of the Sasquatch in Aboriginal culture, you know, as, as Zunaqua, the wild woman of the woods, which so frequently is dismissed as supernatural or mythical in the sense of exclusively mythical, rather than saying, okay, it occurs in myth. Maybe there's a kernel of truth to that myth that warrants some investigation. And then there's lots of histor what I call historical accounts, and they go back into the 1800s which have languished, you know? I mean, so the early historical accounts, okay, it was described as a monster and people didn't know what to do. And sure, cataloging is a problem, you know? <clears throat> it, it, it seems to be a primate, which, which includes both apes and humans. And I used to be, I would say, insistent on it being a, a, an upright great ape, but I thought that was a really good hypothesis. But there's been this, this dismissal of, of Aboriginal reports, because, <clears throat> Well, because there is a spiritual element, and, and we just fail to understand that, okay, if, if it's um, attributed with supernatural attributes, that doesn't necessarily dismiss it from also being an actual living mammal. And because just like uh, its presence in myth and legend doesn't mean that it's not actually real as well. I mean, there's beavers in myth and legend, and orcas, and waters anyway <laughs>
really make you wonder, is there a supernatural element to the Sasquatch topic? You know? So, we're going to find out today, and I think it's going to be a really fun time and a really good interview, so. Well, the, one of the, the hardest things to wrap my head around, uh, you know, when I started this journey and started to try to understand these things, was the fact that they, people are seeing them literally in the river valley and right inside of Edmonton. And I thought, how can that be? But uh, I mean, if you if you can if you're stealthy and you can sneak around, you know, I mean, I could walk through the farm. I could walk from here to Hinton through the farmland undetected, and I haven't got half the ability the Sasquatch does. Uh, they're just that smart. They know where people are, and the other thing too is they tend to sense them. Uh, they have the ability to sense not only people and other animals, but your intentions. Now, when we all know we've heard of Adrian Erickson, and I don't like to quote him too much because I don't have his permission, but uh, he did mention that the creature has the SP, and and he said that you know. It had to have because it knew the intentions of people around it. There was one of the people that came into his particular study that was adamant that they needed to kill one. And he said, they vanished until the guy was gone. They just knew that, you know. And uh, and I've heard this before. And these are all unrelated people, you know. So I always try to find a common thread amongst people that don't know each other. So they, they have some sort of ability and I like to equate it to if they can read and transmit electromagnetic energy um, you know like a dog can or like a wolf like wolves communicate silently uh, with each other they know when they're you know when it's time for one to take over from the pack they know they'll all get up and walk in the same direction at the same time uh, they have a dominant that they follow uh, and yet and also the reason that we tame them is because they they understand our feelings you know you feel bad and your dog comes and puts his head on your knee you know bad person comes in your yard and the dog's scrowling um, and it, but they're when it comes to sounds that they make it's rudimentary they yipe they growl they bark okay so it's pretty rudimentary now if you turn around and look at a human they take sounds they create music they create opera they talk about uh, events that happened 300 million years ago, talk about the cosmos. Like a dog couldn't even begin to comprehend what we're doing with sound. Well, what if this creature has evolved the same thing with electromagnetic energy sensitivity and transmission? What if we can't even comprehend what it can do? What if it's at that level? And I mean, it's possible. You know, and from some of the things that I've found and that I've heard, it's not only possible, it's probable. Avalanche, avalanche. Big avalanche there, right where I'm supposed to be. Too bad I have the wide angle lens on right now. Yeah, I do not wanna, do not wanna be up there. 
can see at the top of the peak, there is a, a crown line. You can see where an avalanche broke away. But up there, right where that fell, that's pretty much the area where I wanted to go. And, uh, well, I don't think that'll be happening now. Very, very dangerous. So plan B is to, like there are camp next to the river or right in this spot, there's a little campfire area where I am right now that's really nice. And there's already a bunch of firewood chopped up. So, wow, that really came out of nowhere. I'm glad I had the camera rolling, even though I don't think it really caught Not much of that but yeah I don't want to risk it because I'm I am alone out here I'm already probably six kilometers or so maybe a bit more away from my car Nordeg has always been one of the best areas to go exploring and investigating the Sasquatch topic. It has a very rich history in sightings and reports, one of the most famous being the 1962 Bighorn Dam incident, where while constructing the Bighorn Dam, workers spotted multiple Bigfoot-like creatures, observing them as they worked. One of the creatures was reported to be over 15 feet tall. The Nordic area is also well known for its First Nations history. There's some areas where you'll find Sundance Lodges or Sweat Lodges, and the First Nations people still go to these areas to perform ceremonies every year. It's a very beautiful place and it's a very spiritual place, and I think that it's the perfect place to be investigating the supernatural Sasquatch. I feel very lucky to be able to visit this area essentially whenever I want. I'm close enough that I could take a day trip out to these spots and investigate on a regular basis. This area I'm visiting is not too far away from an area where I had a very strange experience back in 2015, where while sleeping in my tent I had randomly woke up in the middle of the night and heard something walking past, something that sounded like it was on two feet. This is one of the very few experiences I've had that could be attributed to the Sasquatch. I'm hoping on this trip that I experience something similar. I think that you need to step back and say, okay, what is in within the realm of possibility first? Okay. Now, if I ever saw one go into thin air, then I would say, yeah, they can do it. I have talked to people who said they've seen that. And uh, one of the guys who said he realized he got disorientated and he said it appeared, it disappeared, it appeared. And he realized, he said, that snippets of his memory were being erased. Now, I believe that wholeheartedly, and I'll tell you why, is because I saw it happen. I had a hunter in the tent and there was something outside the tent mumbling. And from what I've been told later, it's what Sasquatch do, and I heard it walking. And this gentleman went outside for a pee and he screamed the most horrifying scream like he saw the devil. And he passed out. We brought him in the tent. He had no memory. To this day, he has no memory of, of even getting up. And then he went into the deepest sleep I've ever seen instantly. 
but he had no memory of what happened. So when I heard this story about this hunter who was facing three different Sasquatches, a male, a young one, and a female. When the male showed up, he said, it started to disappear and then reappear around him. And he says he understood that snippets of his memory were being erased. So there's that. I have heard that. When I walk over closer to the river, it's quite windier, and obviously you can hear the sound of the water, so hopefully it doesn't screw up the sound too much. And I keep periodically just looking upstream to see if there's anything down there. Because we are looking for Bigfoot, you know, on this trip. We're hoping Bigfoot comes to us. That would be nice. And it is a gorgeous evening. Probably still have a couple hours of sunlight as well. Well, we're here investigating the supernatural Sasquatch, or, you know, the theory of Sasquatch being able to vanish without a trace, to appear out of nowhere, um, the ability to communicate to people through telepathy or mind speak, and the ability to, you know, materialize as orbs. There's lots of different uh, things that go on with the cases of the supernatural Sasquatch, and those are just a few of uh, the different things that people have reported. Very, very weird. Uh, definitely on the cusp of being paranormal, and uh, who knows what's going on. Through my time investigating the subject of Sasquatch, I've always had the idea in my mind that it was a living, breathing thing, a physical thing that walks around and leaves tracks. Um, not something that, you know, appears out of nowhere and disappears as if a ghost would. It just doesn't seem reasonable to me, but then again, we're talking about Bigfoot. We're talking about like a 900 pound upright being covered in hair walking around the forests of North America, you know, remaining undetected for thousands of years so I don't know I guess what I'm trying to say is that anything's possible and uh, that's why we're here basically that's why I'm investigating these stories uh, I'm open to anything I'm open to any theory and I'm open to like actually going and looking into it and, you know investigating it. I'm not closed-minded you know because I do believe that paranormal stuff exists um, and that's just based on previous experiences I've had, you know, firsthand things that I've experienced that I definitely couldn't explain. And I'm also big on the UFO topic as well, so why should I close myself off to ideas of a, a supernatural Sasquatch or, you know, a being that 
could very well exist between dimensions. That's my number one theory is that Sasquatch, if it's supernatural by its nature, it exists maybe in an in-between state where sometimes it phases into our existence and sometimes it phases out. And, you know, maybe it's something that it can't even control. Maybe it just does it by nature. You know, maybe it's... It might not be something where it's like, oh, I'm going to, like, appear in this dimension and that dimension and disappear here and there. Maybe it's just in a weird state that's in between or just, you know, visible in a spectrum of light that we can't see or something like that, you know. Who knows? Um, but that's as far as my thinking takes me on the subject. Um, I'm here in nature, beautiful spot. You know, I think I'm about eight kilometers in from the highway, uh, away from my vehicle. I'm, I'm welcome to them coming in here and uh, giving me a real experience. I keep looking on the, the cliff across the river because I feel like if the, if the Sasquatch do come in to observe me, obviously this would be the perfect spot to uh, you know, watch me from. I got my tent down here, my camp, and they could just be hiding on that ridge, spying on me. And I guess the only downside to this camp is that the river is pretty loud, so it masks the sound of things around me and makes it hard to hear. That being said, maybe the Sasquatch use the sound of the river to sneak up on people, so maybe they will come around. I'm, I'm welcome, I'm open. At the same time, once the sun starts going down like it is now, it gets kind of creepy up. Last year, we were very fortunate to have an experience where an individual called us out to investigate some strange happenings on his property. When I showed up, there were tracks all over the place that appeared as though they were Sasquatch tracks. They were the right shape, they were the right size. We also heard very strange noises. At one point, something seemed to bluff charge us from the darkness in the trees. And right after that, we heard the noise of a horse. And after walking the property multiple times looking for the responsible culprit, nothing was found. No horse tracks. No horse. Just Bigfoot tracks. But after that experience, and after we did a more thorough investigation, things really died down at that location for the whole year. It basically became a dead end. Hello? I know, I'm just trying to talk to it. There's a horse running around back there? Oh, it scared the shit out of me. Weird. That's very strange. It must have gotten out somewhere. Oh, my heart is racing. I hope that that horse is what made those running noises because I was starting to freak out there. What, talking about like sound, um, what are your thoughts on the idea of Sasquatch mimicking other animals? That is a very common, common occurrence. It's a very common occurrence, you know. Uh, I've heard people like they, they uh, I've talked to people who says they've heard them Im imitate the barred owl. The barred owl is quite a common nighttime call. Turkey hunters use it to, if they use a barred owl call, they can get the, cur the turkeys to gobble when they're in the roost. So the, you know, it kind of goes <coughs> And people have actually heard Sasquatch make that sound knowing that there's a Sasquatch there. Um, you know, so yeah, it's 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 very common story. It's very common, and I mean, if they are if they're out in the woods, and they're living there, and they have vocal abilities, which we all know they do, then and they're intelligent, they're going to do stuff like that. You know, that's their that's their realm. What about animals like a horse? Like, there's lots of wild horses out at the habituation site. Uh, it's possible they're a thinking creature. You know, they're going to they, then they're adaptive, extremely adaptive. So it's possible. I, I don't have any anecdotes personally, but I imagine they could, and I imagine they would. Um, you don't want to put anything past this creature. You know, my, my dad used to have a saying, and he says you should treat everybody like they're smarter than you, because they just might be. 
And I think that we need to take that approach to the Sasquatch too. I think it's smarter than us in a lot of ways. Worst sleep of my life. One of them, anyways. No Bigfoots last night. Nothing. No weird noises, really. I thought I heard something in the grass beside me, but I'm pretty sure it was like a mouse or something like that. And that's it. No bears. Thank goodness. One of the other things I've heard too is that uh, their eyes glow red. Now I've talked to some very reasonable researchers who asked me this question. They said they, they have accounts of them turning their eyes red when there's no outside light. Uh, and I have heard this. I have heard this. I especially hear this from natives. Uh, but if the animal is generating signals, it might be, if it could generate some sort of uh, energy and it lit up its eyes, the eyes would shine red because of the blood. It only makes sense. It's just like when you have eye shine from people in a school photo, it's red eye. So there's that. Uh, we've, I've, I've talked with enough people and researchers enough to say that it is very, very possible they have a way of illuminating their eyes as some sort of a signal. Why or how? But if they're, if they're generating energy, it is within the realm of possibility, you know, from what we understand. Uh, you know, and it's like I used to say, people say, well, how can that be? Well, an electric eel is a fish this big. And if you're on a horse and it steps on it, it kills you and the horse. I mean, it can create that much energy and electricity. Okay, and what does it weigh? You know, a pound? Imagine if it weighed 1,500 pounds, how much energy it could, you know, biologically produce. I'm not saying it does, but I'm saying now you're talking about the realm of possibility. Um, <laughs> this whole journey has made me far more open-minded than ever. I ever thought I would be and you know but I mean if strange things are happening in accounts I really I really wish more people would say so but it's really hard for them to even say they saw one of these things you know people living in in the shadow of fear their entire lives and the fear of ridicule ranks up there with everything you know I mean some can make fun of you they make fun of me I don't care I live pretty much without fear of that sort of thing you know I have other things to worry about, but if you're going to investigate this subject, you have to listen, listen to everything. I tell everybody, you know, like I always have people criticizing this aspect of, of investigation or that. And I said, you ever go gold panning? I says, you know, you fill the pan up with dirt and rocks and you don't just say, ah, there's nothing here and throw the whole pan away. You got to keep squishing it and squishing it and removing things and squishing it. And then when, once you've got everything kind of down to the basics, it's when you'll find your nuggets and people who are investigating have to remember that they have to listen to everything in order to find the nugget. This is the point in the night where every little sound is a Sasquatch, you know? There's an area also west of Edmonton, not far from where this guy lived, um, along the North Saskatchewan River, where a family member of mine was there camping in the summer in a little camper, and in the middle of the night, randomly they randomly woke up and looked out the window, and there was a weird light flying like above the water, but 
below the tree line. And it was flying, and it's, it kind of flew towards the trailer and then stopped. And then once it stopped, it like moved back in the opposite direction. And I think they said like five minutes later maybe, the light came back. And it did the same thing. It came back and stopped near the trailer and then flew off again like it was checking them out. And this was, I think it was around midnight. It was dark out, you know. Um, they were in the camper. They were watching this thing through the window, freaking out, of course. Uh, but just a, a weird thing to see. Uh, didn't make any sound, I should note. So anyways, me and this family member, we went out to that spot in the winter and... You know, we just went to kind of explore the area. He wanted to show me the site and just kind of see what was up and, you know, see if we could find anything interesting. And sure enough, we did find some weird stuff. Uh, take a look at this. down the road, down that road we were walking on before we crossed the bush and I kept following it and it comes around to the other side and then I camped at that site. And if we were over there, we'd be looking at the other side of the North Saskatchewan River because it runs this way. You can see where the bank of it is over there. Yeah. But it, when I was in the camper, I woke up at night and I, I was about, you can see this first, this bank, and then that second bank way over there with the trees on it, yeah. that's about how far across the river it was to the other side. And from here to past that bank would have all been boulders. And I was up on a bank like that. And I looked, I woke up at 12 o'clock midnight. And I looked out the little, I for some reason looked out the side window, all those side windows we have, and I seen a light coming down. It was below the tree line of those trees. So it was about from me to that biggest tree right there in the middle on the bank. Yeah. It was about at that height, a little lower. And it came along like this, and then it went, <laughs> went away, and then it came back again. Like how long after? Like maybe five minutes later, it came back again, and then it went away again. Like, <laughs> it was weird, dude. Like the color was wasn't. It like was white? Just, yeah, just kind of like a white light. No sound. No sound. And I would have heard something because yeah. it was dead quiet out there. And the windows were open. And you didn't see tall. anyone else like during the day? No. Well, no, during the day I saw a guy on a quad. I mean, there, there is people around here, right? But... It's freaky. I... I, I'll admit my heart rate was going up because it was one of those things where, you know, your mind wants to figure out what's there. Yeah. But if your mind can't explain it, then it starts j jumping to conclusions, right? So yeah. That's the weirdest thing I've seen because I, the only thing I can explain, the only explanation I've come up with is like a drone. Yeah. But you would have heard a drone. Drones are super would, loud. Yeah. I would have heard a drone. The way In the was, dark. The way that it was flying was like a drone. Yeah. Because it didn't... It could just stop and then go to the other Yeah, way. it just changed directions like that. But <laughs> not very many drones fly at night. Yeah. Especially out here. In mid it was pitch dark yeah. at midnight. Well, it wasn't pitch dark. It was, it's it like was, it saw it was you. midnight, but there was still there was a fair bit of moonlight or whatever. Yeah. It's like it saw it came down, saw you, took off. Came and back then for a second to, look and then exactly. took off. I had got a, uh, an account of somebody saying one across the highway heading, or the road in the wintertime, heading for the river. Uh, most winter sightings are in the Alpines, and that was unusual, but there's islands on the, on the river, and I've already heard a number of stories of snowmobiles come, snowmobilers on the North Saskatchewan coming across Sasquatches on the islands. 
uh, in the winter. So, yeah, I've heard those stories. There's a cow head there. Oh, look at that, there's a cow skull. There's another one here for Sasquatch. Oh, look at that carcass laying there. When do you just find a pile of dead horses or dead cows that all died in the same spot? So that's like what they ate, right? I think this is all wolf killed. That's insane. There's a cow. Yeah. There's a cow and a wolf. Yeah. Maybe somebody's in there watching us. But just look at all the legs lying around. That's crazy how they could take. Yeah, there's one on this. Or that might be the lower jaw of this guy. Okay, well, that's got sorted out. We don't have to go that way. We gotta go that way. Really? <laughs> yes. Well, this is getting totally bizarre. Look, it is accurate. We are on the right side of the river. Because look, we just, this is where I said I was going to mark it. And then we walked over to the kill site while we're right here. Yeah. Well, the truck is over here. So, we're going that way. We have to go that way. That way. Yeah, we, essentially what we're following here is the old river bed. I know, I know where we are now, but this is just weird because when I when we first when I first looked at it, I'm like, how could we possibly be there? But we are. Well, we're on this side of the water because when we went when we were at the truck, we crossed this. That's all the ice. Yeah. This is this is where the North Saskatchewan River sometimes runs. And right now it is. Do you think this site is foreshadowing the next step? I don't know. I don't. That, that, that looks like a clean cut, doesn't it? <laughs> well, let's look. I don't know. Yeah, their bones are just. They, they kind of. There's another one here. They, they look like they were cut off of the saw. Well, well, I don't know. Or am I just exaggerating? It's wet. It's wet. Touch that. It's kind of smooth, but it doesn't look like it was cut with a saw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I can see from the spot. Gross. 
find it weird though that the bodies like rot away. Does it? But it's just weird how they're all cut off at the same spot. Yeah. Look at this. There isn't a joint there, is there in a cow's leg? I don't know, but where's the rest of the leg? And and something just pulled that skin right off of it. Like, yeah, because usually it's like a blanket of skin. When, uh, well, I've never But I don't know, maybe I kind of want to go check out that shack and see what's in there. But I don't want to walk across this. Yeah, I don't know how big that place is, but that's a scary thing to do. Through a real mystery. This isn't like, like this isn't like private land. Is I it? So like four so or five cows. Any, what's that? Four or five cows got it somewhere. <laughs> All came to the spot and died. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. That might make sense why there's a bunch of like hooves. Somebody just cut off a bunch of hooves and drug them out here. Yeah, but then it doesn't make sense why there's an entire cow. Yeah. And all the stomach contents. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. I'd be interested to show this to maybe like Ken or somebody like that. Yeah, just see if the... Do you think this is a mutilation? Like a cattle mutilation? Because you know how that's been happening. Yeah. Pretty weird, eh? But we did determine that it was probably an area where somebody came and dumped a bunch of cow parts to use as bait for hunting. Um, because of the shack, obviously, right across the creek. Pretty much aimed perfectly at that spot, you know. And I investigated the blind myself. It is a blind for hunting, so. That's probably what that is. So, just a weird coincidence, you know. That site was right where this weird light was. And, you know, I'm sure there's people out there who would have went through the same thing, who would have heard the story of the light and then seen that spot with the, the cow parts and then been like, holy crap, like, this is like, a, there's something weird and paranormal going on here. And this is very strange. It's probably Sasquatch or something along those lines. Or if they saw the cow parts, they probably thought it was some sort of cattle mutilation or a UFO thing. Um, but just a little bit of investigating goes a long way. We all want it to be something creepy, but that isn't always the case. You have to remember that, especially with the hunting community, if there's something really weird, they ain't gonna tell you. They're just not gonna do it. It's bad enough they're telling you they saw a Sasquatch, you know? So I have been known to dig a little bit about things like, you know, uh, that level of unreasonable fear and dread when there's one around uh, or when they see one. Uh, that's a very common thread. Uh, you know, all of a sudden experiencing like panic attack or like a, a, a woken up nightmare which is I've, I've experienced that myself so I know that there is uh, there is that you know I talk to people who aren't afraid of anything and they say they experience unreasonable levels of fear uh, which I 
think can be equated to electromagnetic energy. You know, even in that one area where there's a lot of Sasquatch sightings, uh, one of the wildlife officers says, we never check hunters in there because they're never in there. We call it no man's land. We never find anybody in there hunting. And the thing is, a lot of hunters will tell you that they've been run out of an area because of a bad feeling and they never go back. So you have to look at the possibility. I mean, it's, it's so hard to prove anything. I mean, you can't, we can't even prove the existence of this creature for whatever reason, you know, or for multiple reasons. And then, you know, to, to go one further, but there has to be, a, I know, I know there's a general knowledge of this creature amongst authorities. Uh, and yet there has to be a reason for them to be so adamant about keeping it secret. And maybe it has something to do with this particular part of it. I don't know. You know, I don't communicate with levels of authorities on these things because I try to stay off the radar. But the one thing that we have over top of the Sasquatch as far as abilities is our ability to compile knowledge. If I get an anecdote from two hunters that have each been in the woods for 50 years, that means I got 100 years in the woods right there. And that's how you're going to find them. I have people say, well, I go out in the woods. Well, you might have to go out for 50 years to see one. But if you talk to people and you get their accounts, like I said, then you've been in, in two or three days, you've been in the woods for 100, 150 years and you got three accounts. That's how we'll find them. The BFRO is on the right track. You think I'm on the right track? Yeah. Uh, well, you, well, you're doing something. Don't expect instant results with this, but I always have a contingency for the day that it happens. Make sure you have a contingency. Make sure it's ironclad. Make sure you're ready if somebody brings you something inclusive. I asked uh, Adrian, I said, I'd really like to see one. And you know what he told me? He says, there's no problem seeing one. And he said that. He said, just get yourself a really good set of uh, night vision goggles and go out to where they are as long as you can see in pitch black he said they'll come to you they always do that's the way you're going to see one you want to see one you know how about you look look at the story of jeff meldrum seeing one at the berm you know where the berm is yeah. well i know for a fact he saw one there because i've called him in there if he says he saw one he saw one there. that's they always come down to observe the cameras there you know just as much as we know they're there they know we're there and they come, they come down there. I don't know, I feel like I got lucky, like really lucky with the first Wild Man film. And going to that spot near the Cardinal Divide and like instantly, like the, the first night we got there we had weird stuff happening, so. I do feel like it was kind of luck because back then I didn't know anything. Maybe that was the, the trick is, is back then I wasn't trying to find it, you know, I, I wasn't on a mission, I was just, kind of just enjoying myself and, and just, you know, being outside and 
now I'm so caught up in like, oh, I want to find these creatures. I want to find Bigfoot. Maybe that's why I'm not having as much success. You know, maybe they can sense that I'm looking for them. Kind of got lucky the other day with the uh, the avalanche thing and kind of catching that quickly on video. That's one of those things that happens so fast, almost like, you know, if Bigfoot was to make an appearance, it would be something that happens really fast. And in that case with the avalanche, I had the camera rolling already. And that, I feel, was luck. Like, I don't have the camera rolling 24 seven. It would be impossible. Like, I don't have enough batteries or memory cards to be able to do that. Um, it was just, I had the camera rolling at that time and then something crazy happened. So I would hope that when Bigfoot makes an appearance, I'm filming. Um, but, you know, in the case of the avalanche, I did have the worst lens possible to capture that on video. I had a 10 to 18 millimeter lens, which is super wide. So I would hope if, you know, Bigfoot showed up and I was rolling, I would have a better lens on the camera that's, you know, better suited for that kind of stuff. I've talked with enough people who've been involved with shooting these creatures to know that they're not bulletproof. And if they're paranormal, they're bulletproof. I have people, I've heard that story, you'll never kill one because they vanish. That's not true. Um, but they, you know, when it comes to when it comes to stealth, they they bring uh, they bring their game up to a level that has never been seen. That is never. It's almost hard to comprehend. So, and you know, they're never alone. You know, they there's always one that knows where the other one is. Like I, I hear people say all the time, "If I ever see one, I'm going to shoot it." Well, you shoot it, and then all of a sudden you're facing down multiple other ones. What are you going to do? You ain't going to be able to quarter it up and and pack it out like a moose, you just are not going to be able to. Your life is, is in danger, you know? They're intelligent, you just killed their buddy. I know a place in Alberta where the truck drivers are seeing Sasquatches at night while they're taking logs out. And they're, I'll use the word warned, not to talk about it. And these stories are, you just gotta look for them. You'll find them, they're there. And from reliable sources too. I think it's a little bit sad uh, I think that if they're out there, I think that we, everybody needs to know they're out there. I think that the animal shouldn't be used by any special interest group at all. It should be like illegal. And if I ever have anything to do with uh, discovery one day, that's going to be the only one thing I ask for is don't let anybody use this to promote their agenda. Because as soon as one faction promotes an agenda, it makes it profitable for the other faction to kill one. And that can't be allowed. You know, they, they're smart enough to know they want nothing to do with us and our petty disagreements. And uh, I think that'll have to be honored. People are very guarded about this subject. And a lot of the people that know about the existence of these creatures don't want them divulged. A lot of them. More than you know. And uh, I still think it needs to have a scientific name because it, well, according to the information I've got from the Canadian Wildlife Service and even the Alberta Wildlife Service is that if it doesn't have a scientific name, it can be killed at any time by for any reason. But once a type specimen is brought forward, then it will have a scientific name and then it will come under the umbrella of regulation. Okay, so getting that type specimen. I've talked to biologists who said you can not do it without a body or a skull. Without a whole body or a skull. I've had that told directly to me. Don't play with DNA. I've already done that. Um, it's going to take a type specimen that can't be explained away. 